Hi, my name is Paula Cole Jones. I'm from Washington, D.C., All Souls Church, where I'm a lifelong member. Um, so we're here in Kansas City with the Blue Revival, that's Black Lives of Unitarian Universalists. It's been a fantastic uh, event. And, you know, the, the idea of revival, um, I thought about it before because often uh, we can have old, kind of maybe stereotypical ideas of what that means. But having been here, I, I have a different um, take on revival. And it really is about renewal and reviving um, our energy and our spirit and our community so that we have that strength moving forward. Um, and it's, it's been a wonderful, deep, uh, stirring event lots of beauty and the, the one way that I kind of phrase it up is black love you know we're here unconditional love for each other and for the work that we do uh, we have faith um, and we are moving forward together thank you anything you want to add I, I want to um, I want to express my deep gratitude uh, to the blue um, organizing collectives. They've done a fantastic job of, of conceptualizing blue and moving things forward. They bring a lot of heart and spirit and, and skills to the process. I want to express my gratitude to the planning team. I think they've done a very good job and to All Souls Church here in Kansas City um, for making this our home for the weekend. Um, I don't know if I mentioned earlier, I'm a part of the um, Council of Elders for Blue, so I, I'm here um, also thinking about what does it mean to be an elder, and how do we support, and, and what is the legacy in all of this. Thank you. Hello, my name is Martha Carell, and I'm from the Unitarian Church of Harrisburg. Um, what I expected from this weekend was to bond more and it actually happened and I bonded in a way that was correct for me. Um, a lot of times people think we are just one type of UU but we're many types and I needed this to grow a little bit to be uh, a place where I could feel complete with myself and you know I, I had a little blackness part down already but I needed the rest of the spiritual part to come to me. I am Samuel Prince and I am from the Black Lives UU Organizing Collective. I'm Reverend Mel Hoover and a Unitarian Universalist minister and also an elder to the Black Lives Collective. Well, we have had this service here and I was, I was really taken with the exuberance in which I, I saw so cool outlined the things in which a person have to do they have to raise their left hand their right hand and shake their heads and it was marvelous okay now for those of us part of what you're saying is you came into a service and this is uh, so cool is, is an african-american preacher and out of 
he's a scholar. Pentecost? He's a Pentecostal yeah. heritage, but he's also a scholar. A scholar. A That's deep right. scholar, That's heavy, right. and an activist. He's known throughout the country yes. in terms of going around and advocating yes. for justice making. Right. So he came into a UU pulpit this morning mm -hmm. with activists who've been gathered for a couple of days themselves and religious in the in black UU tradition and join with uh, a more traditional, predominantly white yeah. new congregation, yeah. am I right? Yeah, 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 so, yeah, yeah. So, But what he right. did is, he brought himself there, but he actually gave people some clues yes. about yes. how they right. could be engaged and, right. and give him guidance about what they were understanding. Right. Is that, was that That's true? Right. Well, a part, of, a part of, of what my experience was also was the fact that he named things, he named, he really named certain language, and the language it resonated with, uh, with people. Uh, but what was really interesting to me, though, was the fact that afterwards, he was having this great theological discussion yes. out, outside. And the comment was made that there was so much work still left to be done oh, yes. on both the, the UU theology mm -hmm. and the ways how it, it popped itself Black liberation. Black liberation. Let me just ah, correct that. Black, li black liberation. So um, it, it, it's for me. It's quite interesting to see how is it that we could create these spaces mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. individuals to bring themselves right. and to be who they are without judgments. You know, I, I think one of the things that because I was I was in helping some other folks at the end of the service that we'd been in, which was a black-based yes. service. Uh, and when we were actually looking at black humanism, which was part of the gift based on the fact that it's rooted in a black understanding of yeah. Jesus and Christianity, yes. not a white theology right, that's Christology, right. That's right. which is different. Yes. And many people don't seem to know that. And so even the uses of the language, as I, I talk about this personally, because when I was growing up in my Episcopal church, I, my mom was the superintendent of Sunday school for 40 some years. And in that time, we had discrimination. Right. We had black right. churches, right. we had right. white right. churches, right? Yes. Except, yes. you know what's different about our church? In our church, well, we had blacks, we had people of different colors, uh -huh. we had white people who chose to be at our church. And guess what? We accepted everybody. Well, but the difference with, with listening to this now is the fact that as a former priest, yes. Being in the Anglican faith, yes. Even even after my years of leaving the Anglican Church, some of this language sometimes it kind of said, ah, I still have to pause, right? Pause for acceptance now, not to say hmm, this is something new. No, it's just ah, that's what it was. Because I thought it was quite interesting that when this when Soku spoke of was it Soku? Yeah, I think when he spoke of. Adam and Eve, yes. and also last last night when Reverend Flunder right. made this fabulous point about Adam and Eve and how Eve was in Adam. Right. I thought that was fantastic. But see, you know, you know where I first heard that. Where did you first heard that? Growing up in my Episcopal oh, church. Oh, that's what I was wow. about to say. My Episcopal church was more UU wow. so than most churches I know. And my mom was in charge of Christian education Isn't and, and the development of that time. And that when I so came in about 12 or 13.